Hi friends, it's day three. We are talking about the narrator this week in fiction text. That means we are going over who is telling the story. All right. So the text we're looking at today is Mike Mulligan. I am going to flip over and present my screen so you guys can see it. So we're looking at Mike Mulligan. Let me go back to the beginning. Mike Mulligan and his steam shovel. And I'm not going to read the whole story again, but I am going to just go back briefly and retell. That means I'm going to say what happened in my own words instead of reading every page one by one. So here's all the parts of Mike of Mary Ann. And we know that Mike Mulligan had the steam shovel and he named her Mary Ann, just like people name their cars or their boats or whatever. He named his steam shovel Mary Ann because he loved her so much. And in this story, Mary Ann really is a character. We know that characters are not just people. And Mary Ann is a character because she has feelings. We know that she has feelings because she gets sad at some point in the book. This is where she's digging the canals, the roads, um she's digging away for trains to get through mountains she's digging over the hills she helps with roads in the city this is the airport she built a landing spot for the planes she helped dig the cellar and the skyscraper and that's like the basement that's the bottom story of a building but then came along the gasoline shovels. They're, they're run by gas or they're electric. And these machines just work a lot faster. So here's where it says that Marianne is sad. Very, very sad. So she's got feelings. Look at her face. Look at Marianne's face on the bucket. It's like she's in shock. Because <gasps> all these other steam shovels were, be used, were being used for parts. They're in like the junkyard. She's just, <gasps> she can't even believe that that's what's happening. But because Marianne's in such good shape, because Mike Mulligan takes care of her. See her face? She's even smiling right here. So they heard that there was a town nearby, Popperville, and they needed to dig a basement. So they decided, Mike Mulligan and Marianne decided they were going to go down there and they were going to build the cellar for the new town hall. So they go down there and they start digging. And they make a deal with this guy in town, Mr. McGillicuddy, that they can build it in a, they can dig it in a day. So they're down there digging. All the people are coming to watch. Mike Mulligan's working faster and better. Mary Ann's working faster and better. They get it dug. And then what happens is they've dug so fast and so hard. Let me make this smaller. They've dug so fast and so hard that they realize that they're stuck down in that hole. They don't know how to get out. So the little boy makes a suggestion and he says, why don't we just build the town hall over top of Mike Mulligan and Mary Ann. And so what they do is they turn Mary Ann to this, into the, um, she's like the heating system. They make her parts, they use her parts. So if you see the last picture, they're using her parts and they're making her into the heater at the bottom of the building so that it, all the heat goes up and warms the building. And then Mike Mulligan, he stays down there and he takes care of her. He's down there every day. He's down there every day taking care of Marion. All right. Well, let's go back up. We're looking for words narrators use. I talked to you previously about how in my redheaded, rot redheaded older brother, there were lots of, they used the word I, me, my a lot in the text. That's not a word we hear in Mike Mulligan. Let me flip back up here real fast. Okay. That's not a word we hear in Mike Mulligan. So um, we know the character was Trisha in My Rotten Red-Headed Older Brother. Trisha was talking. So she was saying, I can't believe that my Bubby loves my brother. He's so rotten. My older brother can do this better than me. So we saw that word a lot. We don't see that word in Mike Mulligan. So it says Mike, Mull Mike Mulligan had a steam shovel. It, her name was Mary, a beautiful red steam shovel. Her name was Mary Ann. Mike Mulligan was very proud of Mary Ann. He always said that she could dig as much, she could dig as much in a day as a hundred men could dig in a week. But he had never been quite sure that this was true. 
Mike Mulligan and Marianne had been digging together for years and years. Mike Mulligan took such good care of Marianne, she never grew old. It was Mike Mulligan and Marianne and some others who dug the great canals for the big boats to sail through. So I don't hear the words, my, me, or my in this story. The words that I hear over and over and over are Mike Mulligan and Marianne. It's as if someone is telling a story. Mike Mulligan did this. Marianne did this. Even when we scroll through further in the book, it was Mike Mulligan and Marianne and some others who smoothed out the ground and filled in the holes. So the words that we hear over and over and over in this text are the character names. So that tells me that it's not a character that's telling a story, like in my rotten red-headed older brother. It's going to be the author of the book that's telling the story. And in the instance of Mike Mulligan, the author's name is Virginia Lee Burton. If you go to the front cover of the book, the back to the front cover, cover, and it says written and illustrated by, so that means the author wrote the story and drew the pictures, and that is Virginia Lee Burton. So Virginia Lee Burton is the author, and she is the narrator of the text, okay? So this, this story does not have a narrator inside the book. It's someone telling the story that they wrote. Just like when I'm in Writer's Workshop, and I wrote this story about my um, family and how we had gone on a trip, and I was telling about it. I was the author, so I was the person who narrated the story. That's who's narrating this story, all right? When we read My Rotten Red-Headed Older Brother, the author is the narrator, and the author is a character in the story because she put herself into the story. The author didn't put herself into the story. She's standing back, and she's telling you all about what happened. You don't hear anything about Virginia Lee Burton inside of this story. All right. So when you're looking at your packet that says 1019 on the front, there is a page that says what it says, who is telling the story. And I do want to go over this with you guys again. I went over it with my groups, but the other groups might need to go over this too. It says, who is telling the story? Now this one's got my rotten red headed older brother. You're thinking like the narrator, not like Miss Craig, not like yourself, but as the narrator. What words does the narrator use in this text? So in my rotten red-headed older brother, does the narrator use the words my brother or her brother? The narrator says my brother, my rotten brother. So we would circle that because we know the narrator is Trisha. She's a the character. Then it says number two, she lived or I lived. What does Trisha say in the story? She says, I lived with my bubby, with my mom, with my brother in Michigan. So we would circle, I lived. So you're filling the sheet out as the narrator in this story. Okay. I know that might have been a little confusing for some of you to work on at home. And then the one that has pink at the top, we're going to do this tomorrow when I do the lesson on the empty pot and talk about the narrator. So you don't have to do this one yet. Okay. So I just want you thinking right now about the two texts and who's telling them. So my rotten redheaded older brother, the author happens to be a character, happens to be in the story, Trisha. So that's who's telling that story. The story of Mike Mulligan, the author is telling the story. She's standing back and telling you a story. So she's telling you about Mike Mulligan and Marianne and what's happening with them in the town of Popperville and how they had, um, they found a way to make Mary Ann stay around. They kept her from going into the junk pile. They kept her at the bottom of the basement and she ended up staying in the building that she helped to dig out. All right. So tomorrow when we get together, we'll look back at the empty pot one. Don't do that one yet. Just hang tight on that. And you guys have got some books in Epic Assigned that go along with this activity. So I want you guys to bounce over to Epic or Raz, and I want you to read some books on your grade level. I know it's harder with us not being in class and you just not having a bucket of books to sit down and read from our school library, but you do have digital books. You've got books assigned to you in Raz. You've got books assigned to you in Epic. So I want you guys to really make a point of sitting down without some distractions, putting your headphones on and reading a little bit every day. Because when we come back to class, we're going to continue to work just like we were never gone. All right. So I want you guys working on your reading stamina and working on keeping that built up. Okay. I will see you guys tomorrow.